back to Las Vegas. We are live at Caesars Palace. Sam Rosen, Randy Gordon, and Roy Firestone. It is championship night. And standing by, Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalonde, who will fight for two titles. The newly created 168-pound Super Middleweight Championship and for Donnie Lalonde's Light Heavyweight Championship. But, Randy, that's a surprise, making the 175-pound champion come down to fight at 168 pounds. That really is a surprise, and I don't think that's ever been done in boxing history before. You know, that's a vacant championship, that 168-pound title. And that's like saying if there was a two flyweight champions fighting for a title and the lightweight title was vacant, that they could fight for that title also. It is kind of a crazy move. But they've done it. And right now, Roy Firestone is standing by, and let's go to him right now. Roy? Okay, Sam, thank you very much. We're just a few moments away between uh, Leonard and Lalonde, and I think pretty much uh, people are aware of the principles involved. Sugar Ray Leonard, of course, for the better part of a decade, one of the most dominant fighters around, one of the most glamorous fighters around. People ask why he's fighting Donnie Lalonde. He's already established himself financially and one of the greatest fighters of all time, certainly. People don't know the story of Donnie Lalonde, perhaps. A fighter that uh, came along late, has only been a professional fighter for seven years. We have a feature story on both Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalonde. No one can dispute Ray Leonard's ring accomplishments. He is one of boxing's greatest showman athletes, whose savvy and courage are well chronicled. Some critics claim, though, that Leonard's talents are exceeded only by an enormously healthy ego. An ego that fueled the drive in these great fights, but an ego that makes it difficult for him to retire gracefully. Indeed, he has come out of retirement five times now, and some suggest that money, he may earn between 10 and 15 million for this fight, is at least as important as any other motivation to fight. Leonard says that beyond the financial rewards, boxing always offered him a challenge, a challenge to test his will. He says he looks for validation of the public. There's always the spotlight. There's always the children. Lalonde's story is a stark contrast to Leonard's, a shy late bloomer who hails from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Donnie Lalonde says he fights almost apologetically. He never looks to inflict pain, he says, only to win the fight quickly, decisively. But Lalonde has never faced the big hurdle in his career. A pro only seven years. The question for Donnie Lalonde remains. Can he deal with the magnitude? Can he deal with the expectations of this fight? In a word, can Donnie Lalonde deal with all of the pressure? Maybe he doesn't, I'll take that back, maybe he doesn't realize what he's up against. Maybe that he, because he's never been involved in an event, a major event, maybe he can say that. But November 7th, it's a totally different picture because that's when Lalonde will meet reality. Ray hopes I'm going to have problems responding to the pressure. I'm going to enjoy the excitement of the event, and I'm going to thrive on the excitement of the event. I can't wait uh, for the electricity in the crowd and for the anticipation. I think a lot of people are starting to realize this is the last fight of Ray Leonard, and he's going to get knocked out. Donnie Lalonde's fight weight is some seven pounds lighter than normal. A concession, some say, could be very crucial to this fight. But will Lalonde's size and strength be a factor? What if Lalonde, the legitimate light heavyweight, tries to pressure him? Lalonde comes up throwing bombs in the first round, second round, third round. Uh, just defuse it. I just have to take away the power of it. Not be there, not be a stationary target. Uh, this would be a very uh, tactical fight. I just have to break him down. Same principle of chopping a tree down. Same principle. I feel great at this way. I've been 171 for, well, the three weeks prior to the fight, I was 171. I've been 67, 8, and 9 uh, at various times throughout training camp. Um, it's been no problem at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's been an asset to me to get down because I feel lighter, faster, and, and stronger just with the speed advantage. Anyone who saw Leonard's mind games on both Roberto Duran and here with Marvin Hagler knows that Ray Leonard will use it as a kind of strategy. How will the psychological warfare impact this fight? Lalonde says he won't buy Leonard's ploys. He even suggests that Sugar Ray Leonard may be a shot fighter. I admire Muhammad Ali. 
Michael Spinks, the way Michael Spinks handled himself. I respect Ray Leonard's accomplishments. Uh, the fact is, uh, Ray doesn't know when to quit. He's like the rest of the great fighters. They, he's, Ray's accomplished everything there is to be great, except fight for too long, past when he shouldn't have been fighting. They all seem to want to have that last chance, try and beat Father Time. Ray can't do it. Again, I find it quite interesting that uh, I just met Lalon, what, about five, six months ago, and he's got to know me already that well. I mean, he knows me personally from what I gather, uh, his analogy of Ray Leonard. But whatever he thinks or whatever he believes, to me, is not relevant because uh, I'll make the difference in the ring, not what he thinks. We are standing by just moments away from Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalonde here from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. This fight, the Lalonde-Leonard fight, is not without controversy, mostly centered in Sugar Ray Leonard's camp. Sugar Ray Leonard and his longtime trainer, Angelo Dundee, split just about three or four weeks prior to this fight. It has to do with money. Angelo Dundee apparently didn't feel he was paid the kind of money he felt he should have been paid right after the Leonard Hagler fight, about $175,000. Certainly that's not spare change, but not typical of what a trainer who is trained as long and as hard as Angelo Dundee has with Sugar Ray Leonard. Well, the two are apart for this fight, and we do a closer-up look on Sugar Ray Leonard and Angelo Dundee, the relationship and how it all sits in Sugar Ray Leonard's camp. You're blowing it now, son. You're blowing it. Okay, put the ices back. Keep that there. Keep that there, Ray, baby, right there. Angelo Dundee, part coach, part cheerleader, part ring strategist, there for Leonard's most important fights. Leonard won't have him there tonight. He may never again have Angelo. Will Leonard be able to overlook this ugly chapter in his career as he enters this important fight tonight? I'll miss him, but again, uh, what bothers me the most is the fact that I thought we had a, a special relationship. And uh, by the way things happen, uh, I really don't know if that relationship was valid at first. Angie has been a big inspiration to Ray, and I think that whenever you have an upset in a relationship like that, it's got to have some effect. But Ray's overcome a lot of things. Uh, Ray's a great fighter, and he may be able to overcome not having Angelo in his corner. That's my man! That's my man! But Ray, when you slide under the guy, stop! Hey, nail him! All right, don't grab him around the shoulders. Hey, don't grab him around the head. the shoulders, Bobby. What can do it? Mm, I have enough experience under my belt to know when I'm behind on points. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to know if you're behind on points. It doesn't take a genius to know whether or not a uh, fight is close, too close for comfort. I also have competent people, which they don't acknowledge, who's been with me from day one, Dave Jacobs and Jenks Borden. Uh, so that's not a major, major concern of mine. Well, I hope they don't use it as an excuse that if they, they didn't have Angelo and that's why they lost, or if that's what they're trying to, they're looking for a, some way to hedge. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I don't know why Angelo isn't there. He's been there from the beginning, and I think he should be there. I think Ray should have stood up and said, Ange, uh, you've been there from the beginning. Whatever you want, you got. That's how we should have did it. Certainly enough money going around. It was like a family member to me. And it's apparent that it was never as really solid as I was led to believe. Uh, and when you hurt or destroy friendship, you lose it. And uh, that's, it's over. Marlon, start. 
the postscript to the story is what the Mike Trainer people, the Sugar Ray Leonard people, are saying about the Angelo Dundee relationship. Basically, Mike Trainer, the attorney for Sugar Ray Leonard, is saying that they paid Angelo Dundee the most money he ever made in any fight, including the fights with Muhammad Ali. Uh, Dundee just feels that he deserved more, and a lot of the fight experts believe that for all the fights over the years, the multi-million dollar fights, that Angelo Dundee deserved better. Also worth mentioning that Dave Jacobs, longtime corner man uh, for Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, was apparently also involved in a controversy involving money, although Ray Leonard told me he didn't feel it was a, a money issue. Dave Jacobs uh, to the tune of $25,000 after the Roberto Duran fight. Let me bring in Henry Gluck, the chairman, uh, chief operating officer, for Caesars World, chairman of the board here. And you have a, a big, big crowd out here at Caesars Palace tonight, an enthusiastic crowd. This goes a long way to reestablishing, not necessarily that you ever left, but Caesars is on top of the boxing world again tonight. Well, thank you, Roy. No, we, we certainly didn't leave. Uh, this fight is... I've just been told is being seen in uh, six continents and 53 countries. This is the largest audience ever to see a fight before cable uh, television. We're very proud to have it because we, it's a very important thing for all of our properties. Uh, these fighters trained in the Poconos. Um, they're here in Las Vegas. We have a huge, enthusiastic crowd. An event like this lasts for four or five days, and our image continues on for years. And a solid image it is, but I want to ask you point blank, if you feel there is pressure now from Atlantic City, if you feel that the competition is particularly good for boxing, or the price is going to get so sky high that uh, no one can compete with each other almost? I think you have to make a business judgment on each individual fight. As you know, we've had the most successful hotel in Atlantic City for the last four years. And so when there's an important fight, we're also anxious to be a bidder on that fight. However, if you look at the total economic benefit for the most number of people, it's the most important to have the largest audience. And the largest audience, of course, is here. Henry Gluck, CEO for Caesars World. Now let's go back to ringside. Thank you, Roy. And right now we are set for the Canadian and American national anthems. And there is Sugar Ray Leonard. Nice outfit. Sugar Ray Leonard, 32 years old. Donnie Lalonde says he's too old. He's an old welterweight. He may be 32, Randy, but he's well-preserved. He's fought only two times in the last six and a half years. The wear and tear hasn't been there on his body. But can he keep coming out of retirement and fight the way he wants to? Well, there's two different schools of thought on it. One is just, as you said, no wear and tear on the body. But on the other hand, Boxers need to have that contact very often to keep their bodies really hard. You can get in shape working out in the gym, but what happens when the real punches with, with the 10 ounce gloves start crashing into your body with bad intentions on them? Remember, there's no time here. There's no 20 ounce gloves. This isn't sparring. Donnie Lalonde has a major league right hand, and what happens when he drops it on that smaller body of Sugar Ray Leonard? And Sugar Ray into the ring. A capacity crowd here. 15,000 at the arena in the parking lot at Caesars Palace. Sugar Ray Leonard. Three-time champion. And now trying to add two more world titles to his trophy case. And now the defending WBC light heavyweight champion of the world Donnie Lalonde, born in Kitchener, Ontario, grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, left home at the age of 15, turned pro at the age of 20, and now his greatest moment, a $5 million, maybe $6 million payday for Donnie Lalonde. I wonder where Sugar Ray Leonard got that road, from Hector Camacho? says it will be size and power against the skill of Sugar Ray Leonard. you got to believe that the longer the fight goes, Donnie Lalonde has a better chance. But I think early in the fight, he's going to see moves he never knew existed in a ring. There are a couple of things working in Lalonde's favor. This ring is smaller 
than the ring Sugar Ray Leonard fought in when he fought Marvelous Marvin Hagler. He's got Jenks Morton as his chief trainer, not Angelo Dundee. Dave Jacobs, both longtime corner men of Sugar Ray Leonard. They have his trust and they have his respect. And Jose Correa will be there as well. But they made, I think, one major mistake that Angelo Dundee, I believe, would not have made. This is a very spongy ring. And a spongy ring is like running on a beach on the sand, and it eventually takes the legs right away from a boxer. Donnie Lalonde's manager is David Wolf. He took him over after Donnie Lalonde went to Maryland and asked Mike Trainer to, to, to manage him. Tommy Gallagher has done a marvelous job of training Donnie yes, Lalonde. Has. has worked with his left hand, and perhaps the best cut man in boxing, Ralph Citro, will be in the corner of Donnie Lalonde. The tail of the tape looks like this. They officially weighed in at 167 Lalonde, 165 Leonard, but I can tell you for a fact, Leonard is 162 and a half. The age difference, you see the reach, goes to Donnie Lalonde and the sizable height advantage. We are set for the dual championship matchup. Let's go to ring announcer Chuck Hull for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the WBC at ringside this evening, for the next bout of the evening is Dr. Elias Bannum of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The officials assigned for the next bout of the night, the judges are Chuck Chiampa of Las Vegas, Nevada, Stuart Kirschbaum of Detroit, Michigan, and Franz Marty of Ostrichen, Switzerland. The timekeeper is Mike Lichella. Counting at the knockdowns, Al Bisek. The attending physician ringside, Drs. Flip Omansky, Donald Romeo, and James Game. And your referee is Richard Steele. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Middleweight and Light Heavyweight Championships of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting out of Potomac, Maryland, weighing in at 165 pounds, four wins, one defeat with 24 KOs. He is the holder of three different world titles in three weight divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sugar Ray Leonard. Fighting out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Weighing in at 167 pounds. His professional record consists of 31 wins, two defeats, with 26 KOs. He is the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Daddy, the Golden Boy, Lalonde. Richard Steele with the final instructions. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. 55th title fight for Richard Steele in 16 years as a referee. The moment has arrived for Donnie Lalonde. And everyone wonders how he'll respond. Sugar Ray Leonard, one more comeback. Here they go. And we all wonder, is it going to be one comeback too much? Milan, the owner of a thunderous right hand. In the last couple of years, under the tutelage of Tommy Gallagher, he's gotten more maneuverability from his once immobile left hand. Good block by Leonard. I can't help but wonder and think about guys like former welterweight great Jose Napolis when he tried to step up and take out Carlos Monzon. He got destroyed. How about Bob Foster when he went against Joe Frazier? He was a splinter in there. What will happen when Lalonde hits Leonard? And you better believe he will. The Leonard movement. Can he get inside to use his quick hands? What's going to happen when Leonard gets close and realizes he's not nearly as strong as Lalonde? Lalonde has fought most of his fights at 172 pounds, has come down to 167. Leonard with a good right hand. Lalonde says it didn't bother me at all. It was a good scoring shot. 
but it sends a message that Leonard could get in and he can land, and he's got fast hands. And that's exactly how I believe Leonard will fight the remainder of this fight. In and out. Ray had to think about that as that right hand came whizzing past his chin. Sugar Ray Leonard, but I just sense he really doesn't like the opponent. Maybe he's just kind of psyching himself up towards that. I felt he never liked Tommy Hearns. He never liked Hagler. He never liked Roberto Duran. I think that's uh, strictly pre-fight hype, Randy. It's hard not to like Donnie Lalonde. He's a, an outstanding person, and he's standing up for a major cause that he has expounded throughout his training, and that is stopping child abuse. Quick left hook by Leonard. And Leonard mixes it up a little bit. You can see that Leonard does not want to get close. No. End of round one. Ronnie Lalonde trying to get the nerves out of the system. Sugar Ray Leonard. Under control. Jacks Morton liked it. Roy Firestone is roving around. Sam, thank you very much. We're with Jesse the Body Ventura, who just did a movie with Donnie Lalonde. What kind of an actor was it? Well, I don't know. I really didn't see Donnie. I came in after Donnie had been there. It's called Thunderground. Should be out in February. But I'm pumped up for this fight tonight. They're just feeling each other out now. It's going to be a lot more. But remember, everybody, November 24th, the Survivor Series in the World Wrestling Federation. Then I'll be behind the mic, Roy, where I belong now. He can only break out of his shell. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Roy. Back to ringside. Yes. This is the only man who was let into ringside through security because everybody wanted his autograph. Jesse, no, Jesse, okay. And he didn't have the press pass and nobody wanted to stop him. Richard Steele has to keep them apart before the bell and here's round two. Scheduled for 12 for two world championships. Donnie Lalonde wearing an insignia on his trunks which says no excuse for child abuse how true it is Both men looking for the right hand at this point. Leonard's got a cock waiting to throw it. Donnie, if he has a chance to throw anything, it's going to be the right hand. Leonard not, not doing as much dancing as he did in the Hagler fight. Not using all of the ring, but content to be in the center of the ring and just peck away. See, Donnie is starting to load up on that right. He should have been untracking the left. Leonard's got to look to counter that right hand to the body. Donnie Lalonde suffered a shoulder injury years ago playing hockey. Left shoulder, he's got a pin in the shoulder. Sugar Ray Leonard said he's going to be taking shots with the shoulder. Although nothing apparently is wrong with the shoulder. It might even be stronger because of the pin in it. He has used a new physical therapist to get more flexibility in that shoulder. Now it turns into a bit of a wrestling match. Donnie doesn't mind it because you just have a feeling he's stronger physically than Sugar Ray Leonard. Good right to the body by Leonard. Made Lalonde wince a little bit. Leonard not showing any flurries. Very few combinations to this point. It's 
can stay away from the power. The key for me is to hit and not get hit, to be inside but not really be there, to frustrate him. It's, uh, it's similar to the way I, I face other opponents, uh, Hearns and Hagler in particular. And thus far, he's done just that. Roll a little bit, spinning some time. Let him just rub the back on the ropes, okay? Keep trying to lay on. Boom, step in with the jab. Spot early. Here's some nice action. Straight left hand in round number two. Sugar Man and another one on the point of the chin of Donnie Lalonde. Sharp and get out. Tommy Gallagher, trainer for Donnie Lalonde, wants, wants him to get off sooner, quicker, using the jab. Round three, scheduled for 12 for the WBC light heavyweight and super middleweight championships. Scorecard, Randy. I gave the first two rounds to the Sugar Man, 10-9. Me too. He's just doing enough, I believe, to win. We're also sampling the scorecards of some of the riders at ringside. Wally Matthews of Newsday has given Leonard the first two rounds, as has Mike Marley of the New York Post. And Bert Sugar, we can't read his first round. I, yeah, I he can, gave both I, rounds to... No, I worked with Bert long enough to know his yeah. scratch, that chicken <laughs> scratch. He gave the first round to Lalonde, the second to Leonard. I think he may have changed it on second thought. Leonard has not set out to frustrate Lalonde. What he's done has been just his tactical boxing. That was a sharp right hand on the ear thrown by Donnie Lalonde. No showboating from Sugar Ray Leonard? Not yet, it's anyway. Business. Leonard says no more retirements after this. He wants to fight every four to six months. He's back. He loves the spotlight, the glamour. I said earlier, Donnie Lalonde is going to see moves he never saw before in the ring, and he's starting to see them now. Leonard's right within punching range, and then bends down and goes left and right, and Donnie cannot find the range. Leonard has made Lalonde miss with his jab beaten him to the punch several times. Alon trying to land the right hand. Lunging at times with that right hand. It was that right hand that knocked out Eddie Davis. Giving Alon the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship and the, light he the right hand which knocked out Leslie Stewart when he defended it. Donnie just pointed to his shoulder. Good solid right to the body by Leonard. And I'm not sure what it was that he was pointing to his shoulder about. I think Leonard has shoved him away using his shoulder. And that could be very dangerous because if you shove a guy with your arm or your shoulder, you could cut him and hurt him. At this point, Leonard's boxing skills and experience have been the difference. Beautiful, Jeff. Beautiful. Oh, 
watching the action tonight is the man who saw a lot of action in the ring in the movies. Rocky is with Roy Firestone. Roy? Sam, thank you very much. Sylvester Stallone. It looks like Lon is gaining in confidence a little bit. Very much so. This is a typical, this is like a movie. This is a Hollywood fight. It seems like everything was going against the man, the tension, the pressure, the, the crowd, and he seems to be rising to the occasion. Leonard looks very tentative. He's, he's, he's nervous. He hasn't quite seen anyone like this. He underplayed this guy a little bit, and I think uh, Lalan is like fighting above and beyond his ability right now, and it, it could make for an interesting uh, venue. Thanks, Lon. Right. Back to ringside. Thanks, Roy. Out for round four. The bell has not sounded yet. Boy, these fighters, they came. They don't want the extra rest. They're in great shape. Outstanding condition on the part of both fighters. Good right hand by Leonard. Rocks Lalonde back. And Lalonde a little disgusted with himself that he let himself get tagged. And Leonard scores with the left hand. And now the speed of Leonard is showing. Milan still stalking Sugar Ray. The crowd responding to every flurry of Sugar Ray Leonard. Milan has been promising to put tremendous pressure on Leonard, and he's not doing it. Too much movement on the part of Leonard. Leonard moving out of the way, ducking away from those punches, slipping. Thus far, it's been a masterful fight plan on the part of Sugar Ray Leonard. Lalon bangs one off the chest of Leonard. You notice how Lalon pushed Leonard off with his shoulder. It's getting rough in there. And I think Lalon realizes he can't physically manhandle Leonard. He's up to four. And now what will happen? How will Ray Leonard respond? I think he's going to move. He's going to get out of there, or he's going to hold on to dear life, his boxing life. Sugar Ray Leonard was down in the fight with Kevin Howard and came back to win. Here, Tony Lalonde puts him down in the fourth round. Milan has been a great finisher whenever he's had his opponent hurt. Leonard on wobbly legs holds on. Milan rolling up the right hand. Well, you're going to see him do that. He's going to just wing it from every corner of the stadium. To that point, Leonard had been having a good round. that right hand. Well, at least the canvas is a soft one that he landed on. And they're checking to see if there was blood. He thought there might be blood coming from his nose. Not that the corner of Sugar Ray Leonard is a weak one. It's a very strong one. But I really believe they need Angelo Dundee in there right now. Final seconds of round four and the knockdown by Donnie Lalonde has turned it in his favor. Ray around the side of the head and down he goes it looks to be this I think it was a glancing blow off the top of the head he well, was more off balance than anything else the left there's the cut on the inside of the nose the left on the side of the head wobbled Sugar Ray Leonard it wasn't a great shot no question about it I think he was more off balance than anything look at the left bang off the side of the head this is round five. Leonard tasting blood for one of the very few times in his career. Scoring on your card. I gave that last round 10-9 to Donnie Lalonde. I would have had a 10-8, except Leonard came back 
and before the knockdown was doing pretty well. Okay, that's how I have it also. Fight even at 38-38. Two rounds apiece. Checking the scorecards of our sports writer friends at ringside. Wally Matthews gave that a 10-8 round and has given the last two to Lalonde. Mike Marley scored that round for Lalonde and has given Lalonde the last two. And Bert Sugar scored the last two rounds for Lalonde. He's given him the last two. and get it out of my fist. Good left hand by Leonard. As he once again resumes using that speed. Sharp jabs by Leonard. That's what he must do if he has any chance of winning against the bigger man. Glancing left hook scores for Lalonde. Leonard got in a right hand. And Lalonde gets in his right. There's no way Leonard can trade with Lalonde. Punch him out. Those body shots, those were real rib roses. One with the right hand, one with the left hand. And we've seen plenty of Donnie Lalonde. That left hand looks better than we've ever seen. It's not a great left hand, but tonight it certainly is a good, strong left hand. If Ray Leonard is to win this fight, it's got to be using that jab. Good hand speed by Leonard, the combination scoring. And he is frustrating Lamont with the jab, and he lands a right hand. Overhand right rocks Lamont and another one. Leonard going all out, and Lamont is holding on. Maybe I was wrong about, maybe I was wrong about Leonard coming in with a knockout. He shook Lalonde in this round. Richard Steele regained control after the rough out. Good right by Leonard. A big round for Sugar Ray. Some action from round number five, a sweeping overhand right. Rung the bell of Donnie Lalonde, another one kept those bells ringing. Lalonde trying to bob and weave, trying to just stay out of danger. But he certainly was a bit shaken up. You see Leonard trying to wing those right hands. His best shot is the overhand right. At least it was in his days as welterweight champ. Some real solid action in there. Sugar Ray Leonard says he's a solid 160. And he has landed some big shots. Round six. And Donnie Lalonde has felt them. I think as long as Leonard stays on the outside and uses that hand speed, jumps in and then gets out, the fight could be his. But if he loses his concentration, and drops that left hand. He's open to the right. Alon blocked most of that left hook. Leonard fighting with confidence. I think Lalonde has let the momentum go right to Sugar Ray Leonard, and he's got to take it back. He's got to take it back by applying tremendous pressure. Because I just don't think Leonard has the legs to go really moving the way he did against marvelous Marvin Hagler about a year and a half ago. Alon's biggest problem is his stationary target. He gives Leonard no side-to-side -side movement. He's right there for Leonard to hit. So when Leonard charges in, he's usually landing. And Leonard is tough to hit for Lalonde. That's what Donnie's throwing, what we call crooked punches. He's not throwing them down the middle. They're coming from over the top. They're coming from outside, but not down the middle. Superb 
condition. Sugar Ray Leonard. He's looked good. He feels he can go the distance easily and finish strong. Good right hand by Lalonde. It hurt Leonard. His knees just wobbled. He's in trouble. Leonard backs up, tries to hold on. Lalonde trying to follow up and desperately trying to land the big punches. Desperately and amateurishly. And the line trying to measure Leonard for that right hand. He has not used the left hand very effectively. Leonard follows up and lands the right hand. But Donnie is breathing hard for the first time in the fight. Taking some real deep breaths. And Leonard landing that overhand right repeatedly. That might have been his best overhand right of the fight. Nothing happened to Lalonde. Another good round for Sugar Ray Leonard. End of round six. I've given him the last two rounds, Randy, and I've put Sugar Ray Leonard ahead. 58. To 56. Let's see that right hand by Donnie Lalonde. He came in, he fired the right hand. It was right before that, I believe, that it was. He landed the right, and Leonard was doing everything he could to stay close and take away the right hand of Lalonde. The left hand was a feeble kind of left hand. Leonard went over the head with the left, left himself open, and the right got him. His knees went. He definitely was hurt. And here's Leonard finishing strong. Aside from that one shot by Sugar Ray Leonard, or by Donnie Lalonde, rather, that right hand, it really was a Sugar Ray Leonard round. He did it with his jab. He did it with a few pesky right hands. But he's got to be very careful. There he came out, tried to suck a shot, went over the head with a right hand. Round seven, scheduled for 12. It's Lalonde trying to put the pressure on. He's not been able to corner Sugar Ray Leonard and keep him pinned up against the ropes. Leonard planting his feet, trying to get all the leverage in his 165 or whatever it is, 162-pound body. Leonard using his smarts to get off the ropes and out of trouble. There were reports today that Leonard, although he weighed 165, came in with some sand in his shoes, some sandbags in his pants. He never did take those pants off. Those are more than reports. I have it on good authority. He was doing it as a psych measure to make Donnie see that he really was a big man. His trainer, James Morton, told me he was 162 and a half. Our unofficial scorers at ringside. Wally Matthews of Newsday has Leonard ahead 57-56. Mike Marley of the New York Post has it even at 57. Bert Sugar of Ring Magazine, uh, Boxing Illustrated has it. Leonard 57, Lalonde 55. I've got a 58-56 for Leonard. So do I. 58-56, two points, Sugar Ray Leonard. And Leonard keeps landing that overhand right. Good right hand lead by Leonard. And that would stop Donnie where he was. Lalonde is shaking and he backs off. The right hand has been extremely effective for Leonard. Now it's Lalonde trying to measure Leonard. Again, the combination finishes with a right hand, scoring for Sugar Ray Leonard. Good left hook by Leonard. Leonard could be making a mistake. Slugging it out here with Donnie Lalonde. Lalonde, the puncher, is always dangerous with that thunderous right hand. But thus far, the superior boxing skills of Sugar Ray Leonard have been the difference in this fight. An awkward Donnie Lalonde 
has not been able to land enough punches. And he continues to miss. And Leonard continues to land. Sugar Ray Leonard haunting Donnie Lalonde as the round ends. And another good one for Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard, he gave what we call a paint job to Donnie Lalonde, hitting him all over the place. Left hands, right hands, arms, body, head. Round eight scheduled for 12. Leonard was down in the fourth, but was not really hurt. There's a slight cut on the inside of the nose of Sugar Ray Leonard. And that cut has been there since he got knocked down in the fourth round. Good left hand by Leonard. Sends perspiration flying around the ring. It's become a battle of left hands the last two rounds, and Leonard is winning that battle. Sugar Ray Leonard trying to prove he can be a champion at any weight class. He's been welterweight champion, junior middleweight champion, middleweight champion. Now he wants the super middleweight and light heavyweight titles. Good luck to the body by the line, but Leonard answers. And Leonard scores the combination. And again, Lalonde backs off. Well, Lalonde backed off, but I don't believe he was hurt by either shot. And Leonard keeps piling up the points. Great, great. Disadvantage is landed to Jeff. Good right hands by Milan. Back Leonard up. And a right hand uppercut. Landed and a straight right. And suddenly Milan's right hands are finding the target. Leonard standing toe to toe. I could just about hear Angelo Dundee from his home in Miami screaming, get off the ropes, kid, get off the ropes. Let's move, move. move. Round eight. Good combination by Leonard again. Leonard has scored in combinations. Holland has been one punch scoring. Leonard looking a little tired, decides to back off or at least try to sucker uh, Milan in. You saw Vinny Pazienza try that last fight rather ineffectively. Leonard just did it as good as Ali or anybody else ever did it. He really looked tired and he suckered Donnie right in. But who knows, this is a soft ring, a squishy ring. Not good for a guy like Sugar Ray Leonard who likes to use the ring. He'd rather have a hard surface to bounce around on. Go home, Donnie, go Good home. left hand at the end of the round by Sugar Ray Leonard. Three nice left hooks. Two to the body, one to the head. Eddie Aliano works on the cut. Jenks Morton talks from outside the ring. Early in the round, Donnie Lalonde came in, got a right hand in. After a left hand, got another right hand, came barreling in, tried to muscle Sugar Ray Leonard around, but Leonard pushed his head down and kept him off balance. Two left hands here to the body, and then right upstairs goes Sugar Ray Leonard, 
three nice shots with the left. Roy Firestone is at ringside with a view of what's going on, Roy. With Bo Derrick. Bo, is this what you expected? Well, I wish it wouldn't scare me like that. <laughs> he really scared me for a minute. He's gorgeous. He's fabulous. You think he's in control, Ray Leonard? He is now. I think he is. Yes, I do. Back to ringside. She's in control. I just gave her a 10. I gave Leonard a 10 also for round eight. I've given Ray Leonard the last four rounds and give him a four-point lead as we go into round nine, 78-74. This is round nine scheduled for 12. A bit of a swelling underneath the right eye of Sugar Ray. Right hand! It has been mostly a one-handed fight for Donnie Lalonde. He's used the left basically as a tease. It hasn't been an effective weapon for him. And it never has been in his boxing career. Good left hook by Leonard. Lalonde had just gotten in with a sharp left hook to the body when he dropped his right hand, and Leonard got home with that left hook to the head. Leonard's jab has been just superb. scoring now it's the left hand doing all the scoring the jab and the hook Leonard is finding it very easy to get in with the left hand the line landed a couple of combinations Leonard gets tagged again Leonard not moving the line landing Leonard stationary the line with a chance here a big chance
all over him. Landing with both hands at this point, Lalonde is defenseless. Lalonde desperately trying to hold on. The left sends him down. He was up at six. And then Leonard came in to finish him off. Tremendous combinations. Lalonde is defenseless. And Richard Steele ready to step in. And again, Donnie Lalonde down and the fight over. And another magnificent performance by Sugar Ray Leonard. Who's We're with Sugar Ray Leonard. Leonard. Ray had so many incredible fights, so many challenging fights. This may have been the toughest fight in your career. Well, I have to say, Roy, that uh, I have to give a great deal of credit to Jose Suleiman and this uh, committee because, see, they had uh, said some very incredible things about Don Lalonde, as well as uh, some boxing experts didn't particularly feel that he was worthy. That proved he was worthy. Not just a knockdown, but just his competitive nature. This fight also meant a great deal to me because I dedicated this fight to Randall Robinson and Trans Africa for his uh, undying commitment to apartheid South Africa. Ray, I want to ask you about the fourth round. Was it, was it more of a slip or was it a legitimate right hand? I got a little lack of days when he caught me. To see Donnie, because his left hand is not at his best, he's uh, it compensates right. for the right hand. So he timed it perfectly because I got a little lazy with him. Late in the fight, it seemed as though, uh, if we can move over here and see the monitor, it seemed as though uh, you, you were gaining in confidence with him, and he was a little awkward, basically. Well, he gives you a whole, the whole square. You know, it's not really that easy to hit because he, the way he faces you. But here is just an amazing set of punches that I threw. I knew one would get him because I started to hurt him to the body. Took a good punch, didn't he, Ray? Oh, he really did. You know, that left hook there was what I worked on throughout the gym. Johnny Lalonde came into this fight, and a lot of people said that, uh, you know, who's Donnie Lalonde, even though he was a light heavyweight champion? I guess, uh, you know, you pay him a lot of respect after this fight. One thing about it, you know, Tom Hearns was victimized by there, by Barkley, and almost by Kitchen. I knew this guy could fight. I've seen him. Forget about who he's for. The fact of the matter is, he's become, he became a champion, Roy, and hell, he fought like a champion. There was a guy that was sitting about two feet from me during the whole fight, and he is the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael Nunn. You want a piece of Michael Nunn right away? Well, I'm going home and I'm enjoying Thanksgiving, enjoy my family, enjoy Christmas. I'll think about those guys later on. I got time. Ray Leonard, congratulations. An incredible comeback and a, and a big victory tonight. Thank you, Roy. Back to ringside, gentlemen. Thank you, Roy. Let's, let's get the to... official announcement for ring announcer Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes, 30 seconds of the ninth round. Referee Richard Steele stops the bout. The winner by a TKO and new super middleweight and light heavyweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard owns the spotlight again. Five times he has won world championships. And he stuns Donnie Lalonde by taking him out in the ninth round, something a lot of people didn't think could happen. Randy Gordon's in the ring right now with Donnie Lalonde. Let's go to Randy. Donnie, it, Donnie, is something wrong with your voice, your throat? I oh, can't speak very well. You're right here, and I can't breathe very well. Okay, we're not going to try to labor it, but in the fourth round, you had him down. What were you thinking? Well, I figured it's just a matter of getting to him. Raise a crafty guy, though. It's hard to catch him again. He knows how to fight hurt. And uh, I don't know, I couldn't get to him. I tried. Son of a, I can't believe it. That final round had such ebb and flow to it, as did the whole fight. But right before you got nailed, you had hurt him. Did you think you were going to take him out? Well, you know, I'd hurt him many times during the fight, and so I couldn't expect it or count on it. But I was going for it. And uh, obviously, I just waited a bit too long. Our game plan was to wait and let him lead. Obviously, he led a bit too quick for me. Dave, you never gave up on this guy from the very beginning. You knew he was going to become a champ. What do you think tonight? I'm not giving up on him now. I'm proud of him. He fought well. He had Ray Leonard on the floor. He's going to be a world champion again. And we just go on from here. We've got nothing to be ashamed of tonight. Nothing at all. Donnie, I know the throat hurts you, but final thoughts. What's going to be with your career? I have no idea right now, Randy, but I'm sure I'm upset. I felt I had this fight. I felt very comfortable in there. I'm very sorry to everybody out there. No. Um, shit. 
Is Sugar Ray Leonard still the sugar man? I don't know about that, but he's a hell of a fighter. And he won tonight because he was a better man. Words of a champion, he was the better man from Donnie Lalonde, the former light heavyweight champion of the world. Back to ringside and Sam Rose. That tells the story. Donnie Lalonde, who wanted so badly to win this one and make the big name for himself, has become another win on the record of Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard winning two championships tonight with a stunning ninth round TKO over Donnie Lalonde. Roy Firestone, what a night it's been. Rosen, you know, when you talk about it, uh, people made fun of the fact that there are so many divisions, so many champions now. It's like alphabet soup, some people have said. Years ago, there were only eight divisions, eight champions. But let me tell you something. Ray Leonard fought a fight tonight. And so did Donnie DeLon, really. But Ray Leonard fought a fight tonight that was worthy of two titles in one ring. He is now, of course, the light heavyweight champion of the world, the WBC, and the super middleweight champion of the world. On tap, perhaps, Michael Nunn. He, he'd like a fight maybe by the, uh, maybe the end of uh, next year, perhaps, so maybe a couple of tune-ups they're talking about it ray leonard though for now says he wants to spend thanksgiving with his family think about it and come back he does want to fight though again no more retirement at least no retirement plans for right now that's the way it is a ninth round victory and an impressive one it was for sugar ray leonard here from caesar's palace in las vegas sam Thank you, Roy. A great night, Randy Gordon. A pleasure to work with you. That wraps it up. Sugar Ray Leonard is a five-time world champion as he stops Donnie Lalonde. We thank you all for being with us here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas on a historical evening for Sugar Ray Leonard. And, you know, as you talk about possible championship matchups, what about Tommy Hearns? Maybe Tommy Hearns is waiting in the wings. That wraps it up from ringside in Las Vegas. This is Sam Rosen for Roy Firestone and for Randy Gordon. So long, everyone. Coors Extra Gold Draft, the beer with the full tilt taste, has brought you the Sugar Ray Leonard-Donnie Lalonde fight tonight at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas.